Hey, this is John Hanson, Mr. Natural Olympia, three-time Natural Mr. Universe. We're at the Powerhouse Gym in downtown Tampa, Florida. And I want to talk to you today about the best bodybuilding posers of all time, in my opinion. When you talk about the best posers of all time, you have to start with the legendary master poser, Ed Corney. Ed competed in the 1970s. He was a Mr. America, Mr. Universe winner. And I was lucky enough to get to see him pose at the Mr. Olympia contest in the late 1970s. And I was there in 1977 when Ed got three standing ovations. The crowd was absolutely mesmerized. He was an awesome poser. And the reason why he was such a great poser is he really mastered the transitions between the poses. And that's really the key to being a good poser is doing the good transitions between the poses, not just the poses themselves. And Ed was able to do poses that conveyed power, emotion, drama, and he posed slow and then he posed fast and he was just an absolutely amazing poser. And I think after Ed Corney, everybody else in the game had to raise their level you know, to match him because he was unbelievable. Another great poser, who some people may not realize, was Frank Zane. Frank was great because he did poses that matched his physique. They emphasized his symmetry, his proportions, and they really made him look bigger than he was. Frank was a master poser because he would practice his routine over and over and over again. I remember one time he said he did a posing routine for three minutes straight and never hit the same pose again. Most people can't do a 30 second routine without repeating the same poses. And Frank would be able to hold the pose and just look perfect. He looked like a statue. He was an incredible poser. And he also mastered how he stood on stage relaxed. And I saw all three of Frank's Mr. Olympia wins from 1977 and 1979 in Columbus, Ohio and Frank was the winner every time. He had that stage presence. He was only about 185, 190 pounds, but on stage he looked like he was 220 pounds. He looked like a monster, he was amazing. And people who look at pictures of him say that he looks like a swimmer, and I don't know how this guy ever won Mr. Olympia, but they never saw him in person. And when you saw him in person with his stage presence and his posing ability, that's what made him such an amazing bodybuilder. Another guy is Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold was another one who did poses that matched his physique. Arnold had a big, massive physique, and he did poses that matched that physique. Um, when he was competing and just starting off and trying to win the Mr. Olympia contest, he was competing against Sergio Oliva, who was probably the most genetically gifted bodybuilder of all time. Sergio was so great that one year at the Mr. Olympia, nobody even competed against him because they were all afraid of him. He won the contest unopposed. So that's how great Sergio was. So for Arnold to beat Sergio, Arnold had to look at Sergio's body and look at his routine and then find poses that would make him look better. For example, Arnold had sort of a wide waist, so Arnold would do a lot of twisting poses that would emphasize the width of his upper body and make his waist look smaller. He had great arms and great chest, so of course he would do the patented side chest pose, but he also did like the three-quarter back pose and the twisting arm poses. And that's what made him look so great. Even when he did his front double bicep pose, sometimes he would twist his waist a little bit to make his waist look smaller. All that didn't happen by accident. Arnold looked at his pictures, he analyzed his physique, and he looked at his shortcomings, his weak points, and his strong points, and he figured out what he needed to do to develop the greatest posing routine where he could beat an amazing bodybuilder like Sergio Oliva. Sergio had an amazing body, but he wasn't a great poser, and he was actually sort of lazy when he posed. He, would do an upper body pose and leave his legs unflexed, or he would drop a pose, he would drop his hands in between poses, he wouldn't do the transitions. So Arnold took advantage of that, and he did transitions, and he posed faster, and then he would pose slower, and he just, he knew Sergio's routine from start to finish, and he would take advantage of any weaknesses in Sergio's routine, and that's how Arnold was able to beat Sergio. Talking about some of the more modern day bodybuilders, uh, the bodybuilders in the 1980s were all incredible posers. That's when bodybuilding was really at an art form. Lee Haney, who was an eight time Mr. Olympia, is not known as a great poser, but he really was a magnificent poser. He, like Arnold, knew that he had a big, massive physique, and he took advantage of that, and he posed like a monster on stage. He did a lot of great transitions. He showed off his strong points, his back, his chest, his shoulders. He, he did poses that emphasized his wide shoulders and small waist. And he did it all in a routine that he would use inspiring music and then match the poses to the music. And he really had some great poses. So Lee Haney was a magnificent poser. Another great bodybuilder was Mohamed Makaway. Mohamed Makaway was from Egypt. He was only five foot two and weighed about 150 pounds, but on stage he looked like he was 200 pounds. He was a very classical poser. He would always use classic music 
and he had very dramatic hand movements. And him, like Arnold, he would do poses that emphasize his strong points and hide his weak points. McAway had like weak hamstrings and he had a weak back. But the way he posed, you would never see it because he hid those, he hid those weak points and only emphasized his strong points. He had great shoulders and great arms and he did a lot of twisting poses and really extending his arms out and showing his great triceps. And he did it all to classical music in a way that the, it just left the audience breathless. He was an amazing poser. Sort of taking a cue from Muhammad McAway was Lee Labrada in the 1980s. Lee, again, like McAway, was a smaller bodybuilder. He was only about five foot five, five foot six, competed at 175 pounds, and was able to win professional contests and take second place in the Mr. Olympia contest only to Lee Haney two times in a row. And the reason he was able to do that, in part, was because of his great presentation and his great posing. Like Frank Zane, Lee Labrada would stand on stage. If he was up there for a half hour, he would never, ever lose his composure. He would be flexed, he would look like a statue as long as he was up there. He would never relax. But when he did his posing routine, it was an amazing posing routine. He had developed poses that were unique to his physique. And he would make it very dramatic and very classical. Again, like McAway, he would use a lot of sweeping arm movements, twisting poses. Um, he would pose for two or three minutes, sometimes to two songs in a row. And he would never repeat the same pose twice. It was an amazing, amazing bodybuilder. And Sean Ray was also another great bodybuilder, a little bit bigger than Lee Labrada. Uh, competed at probably about 195 pounds, 200 pounds, a um, little thicker, but again, another great poser. He learned his craft from John Brown, who was a three-time Mr. Universe winner, and John was an amazing poser, very innovative, did a lot of break dancing, and Sean learned that from, from John Brown. And he did uh, a lot of slower posing, posing to Luther Vandross or Mariah Carey, and he's got some classical posing routines, and every time he competed in the Mr. Olympia, he always performed with great, great posing. Uh, another great bodybuilder also learned from John Brown was Vince Taylor. Vince, again, did a lot of classical posing. And then at the 1991 Mr. Olympia, Vince sort of changed it up and he brought in the Terminator routine where he started using um, voiceovers and he acted like a robot on stage. And he really brought in a whole new level of posing with that routine. No one had ever done that before. And it was really a great routine. But before that, Vince was a classical poser like Sean Ray, like Lee Labrada, and he did a lot of great posing that matched his physique. And that's what really brings in the artistry of bodybuilding and the art form of bodybuilding is doing that type of posing. So those are the bodybuilders to me that really stand out as great posers. There was others, of course, like Bob Paris. Bob was another one, had a classical physique, and he also developed poses that no one else had done before. He developed poses that were unique only for his physique, and that's what made him such a great poser and made him so memorable. Even today, you know, 30 years after Bob Paris competed, you'll see bodybuilders repeating Bob Paris poses. And that's really a tribute to how great this was. And the same thing can be said with Frank Zane, same thing can be said with Arnold Schwarzenegger. So those are just some of my greatest uh, posers of all time. And uh, hopefully we'll have some more great bodybuilders in the future. This is John Hanson from the Powerhouse Gym in downtown Tampa, Florida. So if you like that, be sure to check out this link to see some of the legendary exercises from some of the greatest bodybuilders in the world. And if you're on a mobile device and you can't click here, check the description area below, click the top link, and be sure to add your email so we can send you some more videos. Be sure to like the video, subscribe to our channel, and be sure to leave a comment or question for us.